Hi, good afternoon, students, faculty members, and other participants. I, Ritesh Kumar, Assistant Director, Business Development, take this opportunity to welcome you all in yet another webinar of Canadian Wood. In this webinar, we have two prominent speakers talking about sustainability, the only solution, and wood as a versatile, respectively. Without taking much of your time, let me introduce our first speaker, Mr. Pranesh Chibber. He is the Country Director of Forestry Innovation Consulting in India Limited and the guiding force of Indian operations since 2014. Chibber and, and updates through senior and top management courses at IIM Ahmedabad and ISB Hyderabad. He has been associated with the woodworking industry for over 20 years in his career a span of 40 years. He has held senior management in multinational companies over the years, enriching himself with a wide experience in domestic and overseas operations. He enjoys setting up and building startup ventures and avid traveler. He is widely traveled within India and abroad and has overseen operations across locations since 1990s. His experience has strengthened his ability to understand and adapt seamlessly to cross culture, teams and markets in different geographies. He believes in building organization by empowering the team. He has seen instrumental in starting many innovative initi initiatives for promoting Canadian wood lumber and its applications in India. Over to you, Pradesh. Many thanks, Ritesh, uh, for a lovely introduction. Uh, let me uh, just quickly get my presentation on and I will be with the audience. Yes, good afternoon, my friends, from the schools of architecture and design and welcome to their mentors. I extend you a very warm welcome to this webinar. This is our first webinar for the financial year 2023-24. And uh, this is a very auspicious beginning because we are connecting with the youngest audience in our target group. If you look around, you'll see that the challenges posed by the global warming and the carbon footprint, it is our of need to restore and look after our planet's ecosystem. It becomes important for the architects to design projects and products using sustainable raw materials and processes. It's essential perhaps and the only solution. We humans have a collective responsibility towards protecting the ecosystem of our planet by embracing sustainability in every aspect of our lives. And forestry is one of the such areas. Forests in fact are one of the key areas of focus when it comes to safeguarding the earth's ecosystem. Needless to mention that forests impact the climate change and looking after them helps mitigate natural calamities. And especially I must mention here before I proceed further, the last natural calamity to happen in India of a non-eco-developed uh, uh, environment was in Joshimat earlier this year. I now take this opportunity to introduce ourselves. We are Canadian Wood, formerly, no, for, formerly known as Forestry Innovation or FII in short. We are a Crown Corporation of the Government of British Columbia, the westernmost province of Canada. We are engaged in promotion of wood species from BC Canada in the overseas markets, and we are a not-for-profit organization. FII has been operational in India since 2014, and we have been closely engaged with the woodworking fraternity across the country through our offices in Mumbai, Delhi, NCR, and Bengaluru. So I'm sure the next question is, what do we do? Well, we create awareness in the market about Canadian wood species, their properties and applications through media, collaterals, trade shows, etc. The aim is to establish top of the mind recall for our species. We also host webinars, seminars, training workshops to educate our target audience on our wood species. In addition, we provide handholding, share best practices, and technical support 
to the woodworking industry, including facilitating demos and product trials using Canadian wood species. Over these years, we have helped put together a network of over 41 Canadian wood stockists in 22 cities across India who serve customers the length and breadth of the country. Through them, we have been a part of numerous reman projects all over the country and some wonderful structural projects as well. I'll share some pictures of these later in my presentation. And more is featured in detail in our ebook, which is available on our website if you are interested. Well, it is important to know that India's forests are protected and rightly so. This is helping it to grow the forest cover as part of its commitment towards mitigation of global warming. India ranks third amongst the top 10 countries that have gained in forest areas in the last decade as per FAO and increased to 26.62% in 2021. Having said that, India is the second most population nation. It was very till very recently, and I believe we are now the most populous nation on the world, in the world, with a fast growing economy that makes huge demands on its resources, making us a fiber deficit nation and thus dependent on imported wood to meet our needs. Needless to mention that to meet our commitment of net zero by 2070 at the COP26, India will do well to ensure that the wood imported is certified and from sustainably managed forests. I now draw your attention to the 26th UN Climate Change Conference of Parties known as COP26, where India made a net zero commitment by 2070. While the participating nations reinforced and elevated, and elevated the world's commitment to a 1.5 degree target. Here I must mention and highlight that Canada's forest sector on the other hand has been long committed to climate action. It is one of the few supported the Kyoto Protocol in 1990s and was amongst the first to announce an action plan to help meet Canada's commitment under the Paris Agreement, enabling it to play a leading role in advancing ad climate change, climate action, and committing to securing a net zero carbon economy by 2050. These developments demand greater cooperation and commitment from the industry to work alongside the governments towards a cleaner and greener world, including the architects and designers. We hope. The COP26 declaration will support the expansion of forest certification to promote sustainability of managed forests, uh, sustainably managed forests, and encourage responsible consumption of natural materials like wood worldwide. There are certain myths, and we would talk a little bit about those. I'm trying not to bust those myths, but I'm just trying to clear the air. Contrary to popular belief, harvesting forest is essential to keep forests healthy. Not only old trees in aging forests are less efficient in sucking in carbon and releasing oxygen, but decaying forests release their stored carbon slowly in the atmosphere or rapidly through wildfires. Thus, reforestation and sustainable forestry ensure that carbon cycle continues through healthy forests that store carbon. Forests help climate change and global warming by absorbing nearly a quarter of the carbon emissions. They reduce the amount of CO2 in the atmosphere and in turn decrease the impact of climate change. Keeping forests healthy is a critical part of removing harmful emissions and cooling from our, or cooling of our planet. And the building with wood and use of wood products over carbon intensive materials and maximizing their reuse and cycling is a smart climate change solution. Let me show you here a video on sustainable forestry operations being followed in Canada so that you have a more than fair idea as to what is the Canadian forestry industry doing towards its responsibility of mitigation of global warming and carbon footprint. Mm -hmm. 
There are few places on Earth that can match the diversity and richness of Canada's forests. Forests are an important part of Canada's natural ecosystem and central to its economy, making up just under half of its landscape with eight major forest regions and a vast diversity of wood species. From planting a seedling to manufacturing lumber, the forest sector in British Columbia and Canada is an interconnected industry of forest management and wood processing. This includes planting, tree harvesting with modern, high-tech machinery, and sophisticated wood product manufacturing. The entire cycle is planned around responsible resource management. In British Columbia, forestry and wood product manufacturing are a fabric of our culture, our communities, and our people. Our forests provide a sustainable supply of wood for lumber and mass timber products, while protecting our environmental and social values of wildlife, water, community, economic interests, and First Nations peoples. British Columbia is a global leader in sustainable forest management. Forestry practices in British Columbia ensure that environmental, social, and economic needs are met for current and future generations. This matters to our customers and sets us apart from other supply regions globally. Wood products from British Columbia come from legal, sustainably managed forests. By law, less than 1% of the forests are harvested annually, with three trees planted for every single tree harvested. This commitment to forest regeneration results in 200 million new seedlings planted every year, ensuring replenished forests for the future. Canadian wood suppliers provide certified products under the Forest Stewardship Council, FSC, and the Program for the Endorsement of Forest Certification, PEFC. These strict international certification standards add additional assurance of the global protection of forest resources and make Canada a reliable and sustainable provider of wood products. State-of-the-art technology and machinery, incorporated in our forestry practices and through our highly productive, efficient sawmills, support the production of Canada's quality lumber. After harvesting, logs are transported to sawmills for manufacturing. At the sawmill, the logs are cut to target lengths and loaded into a debarking machine to remove the bark. Next, logs are processed through primary breakdown equipment like head rigs and chip and saws and are turned into lumber. The lumber is then sawed to specific widths and trimmed to specific lengths as it passes through secondary equipment like edgers and trimmers. A scanner will show if the lumber requires any further trimming. Next, the lumber is sorted by thickness, width, length, and sometimes by grade attribute. It is stacked, which may include stacking on sticks for kiln drying. When the lumber is dry, it is ready for final processing. Some lumber goes through a planer mill to be made smooth. Whether planed or rough, the lumber is then graded and trimmed. It is sorted by size and by grade, then finally packaged for shipment. This results in the most efficient yield of the best quality lumber. Once the lumber is packaged and prepared for shipment, it is loaded onto a network of trucks and rail cars for delivery to shipping ports for distribution around the world. Independent studies confirm that the CO2 stored in wood products far outweighs any extra CO2 generated by the efficient manufacturing and shipping of Canadian lumber around the world. Lumber produced from British Columbia and Canada is durable, strong, and versatile. Superior working properties offer design flexibility and durability. Canadian lumber products can be bent, shaped, or assembled as required, making it ideal for countless indoor, outdoor, and structural applications, such as windows, doors, gazebos, and furniture like tables and chairs. Canadian wood species are also easy to face laminate, edge glue and or finger joint, and standard sizes and grades ensure that the same high quality product reaches the client each time. Canadian wood products bring warmth and natural beauty to an interior and exterior application or furniture product. It can be sanded to create a smooth surface, has a superior coating adherence, and can easily take any stain or finish. Across Canada and North America, wood products are influencing design and construction not only for interior and exterior applications, but also the construction of buildings. Mass timber products are changing the way buildings are constructed, allowing for immense spans and taller buildings made of wood. 
Canadian wood products are being used in a wide range of buildings and products, showcasing the versatility, strength, and durability of lumber from Canadian forests. That is why using Canadian wood is a natural choice. There are a few places. Welcome back. I guess uh, it would have uh, kind of opened your eyes to the kind of practices which are available and being followed by countries like Canada across the world uh, to ensure that the forests are kept healthy and are managed sustainably to provide wood for a long, long time. Canada is home to 9% of the world's for total forest and boasts about 35% of the world's independent third-party certified forests. It makes it a global leader in forest certification and a respected source for ethical and sustainable forest products. This positions Canada as a long-term sustainable source of certified wood to fiber deficit nations such as India and help advance the world's collective fight against climate change. British Columbia is North America's largest producer of softwood lumber and Canada's second largest producer of pulp and paper products after Quebec. Alongside traditional goods like cabinets, furniture, and prefabricated building elements, BC's value-added manufacturers make a variety of mass timber and next-generation lumber products. In addition to wood products, British Columbia is also home to leading architects, engineers, consultants, etc., who promote and drive the innovative use of wood in buildings and infrastructure. As a result, their services are too in great demand worldwide. Canada also accounts for about 36% of all certified forests globally, the largest of any country worldwide. Through stringent regulations and continuous reforestation, and science-based practices, its forest industry works hard to ensure that its forests flourish and remain healthy forever. BC has some of the most comprehensive practices in the world. Just 23% of the British Columbian forests are available for harvesting, of which less than 0.35% is allowed to be harvested annually. This helps us maintain zero deforestation record for over three decades now. Roughly 95% of British Columbia's forests are publicly owned and governed by stringent laws and environmental regulations. This, as I said, has ensured that Canada has remained a zero deforestation nation for the over three decades. BC's approach to sustainable forestry also focuses on forest forever. It has the 14th largest forest area when compared to country jurisdictions around the world. These diverse forests are reinforced and reforested promptly using a mixture of planted native tree species in combination with natural regeneration. And these forests are managed for the flora and fauna indigenous to the region to protect the provinces vital ecosystems and biodiversity. This approach has garnered international recognition for British Columbia as a global leader in sustainable forest management. Here is a snapshot of the sustainable forest management certification in Canada. As you see, in 2002, the Forest Products Association of Canada, FPAC, became the only national forest trade association in the world that required its members to certify their operations to any of the three major standards used in the world. Canadian Standards Association, the Forest Stewardship Council, FSC, and the Sustainable Forestry Initiative, SFI. Since it emerged in the 1990s, forest management certification has been adopted quickly across Canada. And now more than 75% of the country's managed forest land is certified. As of end of 2021, Canada had 158 million hectares of independently certified forest land. This represents 35% of all the certified forests worldwide. The largest area of any third party certified forest in 
any country. This coupled with strong forest management governance supports Canada's reputation as a long-term reliable source of legally and sustainably products, produced forest products. Being a world leader by a huge margin in forest certification, Canada's forest areas covered are a size of Germany, Spain, and Sweden put together. In fact, province of BC by itself is at number three, which ranks much higher than many other forest nations, uh, forest, uh, forestry, forest certified nations in the world, except Canada and Russia. Talking about sustainability, BC has roughly the same area of forested area as it did before European settlements. This means there is abundance of wood is available for exports for a long, long time to come. Countries from normal, temperate and colder climates mostly have pine or spruce as species of softwood available, whereas British Columbia has much more to offer by way of its five distinct species from its certified and sustainably managed forests. Each of these species are known for their unique properties. They are easy to work with, very versatile, and amongst them, the two cedars are naturally durable. I'll talk about this in my following slides. As you can see here, the Canadian wood species and their applications are listed both for the interior applications as well as the exterior applications. Similarly, the most abundant of the coastal species in BC, Canada are used for a large variety of interior applications as shown here. And the only species which is prized equally for both reman and structural applications and its species of choice for mass timber products such as GLT and CLT is Douglas fir. We have Western red cedar, the most versatile, sorry, spruce pine fir, the most versatile species for a variety of applications and is most popular for structural applications worldwide because of its stress rating. Then we have the Western red cedar, the lightest and the most valuable of all the Canadian wood species has excellent outdoor properties and interior paneling and decorative applications are highly prized by the architects and the designers. And finally, we have the yellow cedar, which has limited and rare availability, highly prized for being naturally resistant to insects and molds. Uh, it's in high demand specifically by door and window and door window jam manufacturers across India for areas which are infested by termites. And here are some of the more popular sizes in demand from BC in India. As you know, uh, Canada does not export logs, but it exports sawn timber, which is called lumber in North America. And probably it is called just timber, simply timber here in India. Uh, this is available in standard sizes and in different grades so that you do not have to sort all species are duly graded consistently size and season and completely removing the headache of sorting the wood on arrival at a manufacturer's yard. This lumber is from mature trees, often as old as 200 years plus and are thus highly stable, which is appreciated by the woodworking industry. Shared here are some pictures of the furniture made for commercial establishments such as restaurants and cafes. As I mentioned earlier, I am now sharing with you more pictures of the projects and the products made with Canadian wood. Here, what you see is a beautiful bespoke handmade furniture. Some stylish indoor furniture for homes. And fine examples of furniture made in India with Canadian wood species for exports to Western countries. Examples of door windows, door window frames made in India, again using Canadian wood species. Few more examples of solid wood doors and windows. 
beautifully carved doors and this finally brings us to some great examples of interior applications of Canadian wood species designed and installed in India by these manufacturers. Here you see on the screen is interiors of a high-end resto bar in India doing Canadian wood species. More commercial projects executed in Goa and Kerala using Canadian wood species. And an auditorium in Indore and one of the offices in Mumbai on the right. Interiors of a beautiful villa in the hills of Uttarakhand using the Canadian wood species. And again, interiors of a high end home in Pune, Thrissur, and Calcutta. Which brings me to the fine examples of outdoor products made using the cedar species from the Canadian wood lineup. More outdoor furniture with Canadian wood species. And yellow and western red cedars are excellent choice for making pergolas and gazebos. Not just pergolas and gazebos, but also for soffits. You have some very nice soffit examples shown here in high-end residential tower in South Mumbai. And finally, I have here some fine pictures of structural projects done with Canadian wood species in India. Shown here are projects, products at Hyderabad and Mysore. Some more examples of wood frame construction at Chennai, Bangalore and Mysore again. This brings us to another technique of building with wood that is tongue and groove. A highly cost effective way of building with wood. A couple of examples of private houses in Goa on the left and what you see on the right is in Delhi. And then we come to the hybrid technique of building with wood in conjunction with local stone or bricks. A great example of again in the hills of Himachal Pradesh. Last but not the least, here we have a couple of examples of engineered wood or mass timber and structural applications in India using GLT, CLT, the popular terms now, also known as glue lamp. A very fine example of a high end private home in North Goa showcasing extensive use of glue lamp. And this brings me to the end of my presentation. Many thanks for the attention. If you have any questions or queries at the end of the webinar, I and our team will be here to have, he will be here and happy to address the same. After and during the question and answer session, please feel, feel free to ask, or if there is a shortage of time, please mail it to us and we can come back to you later. I now pass that over to Ritesh to take the proceeding forward. Thank you very much. Over to you, Ritesh. Thank you, Pranesh, for such an insightful presentation. It's time to invite our second speaker, Dr. Jimmy Thomas. He is perhaps the first Indian to get the title Wood Technologist in 1999. Jimmy is associated with us since last seven years and contributing as Assistant Director of Technical Services. Prior to joining FII, he worked as a wood technologist and laboratory manager as, at Central Wood Testing Laboratory, the rubber board under Ministry of Commerce and Industry, Government of India for 16 years. He is an accomplished academician and master's in wood science and technology from FRA Dehradun from the first batch in 1998 and PhD from wood science from University of Canterbury, New Zealand. He has authored more than, sorry, uh, he has authored more than 10 peers review journal papers and a book chapter apart from the presenting many conference paper. He is a visiting faculty of FRA Dehradun, NID, NID Bangalore, SEPT University, Ahmedabad. He is a vice president of Indian Academy of Food Science, Bangalore, and a member of research advisory group of Institute of Food Science and Technology, Bangalore. The Board of Studies, FRA Dehradun, under the Ministry of Forest Environment and Climate Change, Government of India. 
He is also a technical member of several organizations such as Furniture and Fitting Skill Council, Bureau of Indian Standards, International Association of Wood Anatomists, Society of Wood Science and Technology, USA, and Woodworkers Guild of America. Over to you, Jimmy. Thank you, Ritesh, for a very elaborate and generous introduction of me. Give me a sec to set me up uh, this PPT. Um, hope it's visible correctly. Is it? Yes. Thank you. So, uh, very good afternoon and uh, warm welcome to the to my talk on wood, the sustainable material. I wish to appreciate all the participating uh, students and faculty for joining us today to understand the features of wood, which is the only sustainable, natural and versatile raw material suitable for a variety of applications. I cannot see you all, but I can feel that you are all looking for the very informative next one hour. So in this talk, I will provide you the basic understanding about wood. I will try to touch upon uh, its versatile and unique characteristics and applications along with a brief comparison with other materials. Well, better understanding about wood will give you the confidence to choose it in your projects. According to International Tropical Timber Organizations, uh, organization, there are more than 1,000 tree species or tree uh, wood species uh, you know, available in trade. However, the variety is coming down or going, the availability is going down almost day by day. 20 years back, if we had 100 plus species available, now it is maybe around 10 and mostly it is uh, teak wood from different countries. So uh, our life is very well connected with the wood and wood-based products, starting from the cradle or bed when he's sleeping and table used for studying and many more. However, Timber or wood is considered as a complex material, which is, uh, I, I should say, hygroscopic, anisotropic, and fibrous in nature. Not to frighten you, I will uh, you know, try to make it simple. Uh, these terms are very important in understanding the uh, properties of wood and also selection of wood in, in your you know, um, careers. Being produced by the mother nature, wood has uh, non-uniform properties along and across the grain or length. That is simply known as anisotropy, in brief. That means not two planks uh, have 100 percent same properties or appearance like a manufactured product, uh, you know, like steel or plastic, etc. Depends on the method of cutting, the grains on the wood surface can be flat or tangential. Um, on the other side, vertical grain or radial. So there are two varieties, one is the flat zone, and the other one is the vertical zone, as shown in the image on the right hand side. You can see that on the uh, screen now. See exactly the dimensions are same, but appearance is different. This is what I meant to say. Tangential surface, uh, they are different in properties, wood properties as well. Uh, tangential surface shrinks and swell. You now, shrinking and swelling, you, know, you might have noticed during the change of uh, you know, the climate, they are uh, shrinking and swelling more compared to radial surface. Wood responds to the changes in temperature and humidity, uh, which is, you know, the surrounding temperature and humidity. That is why it is called hygroscopy. So I talked about mainly two properties. One is anisotropy and one in the next one is hygroscopy. Anyway, I will be talking to you tomorrow also in detail. Uh, so don't worry about all these terms, but this is all, these are all, you know, basic uh, terms or the features of timber. I'm sure, uh, being students, you must uh, you must be knowing about or at least heard about hardwoods and softwoods. However, just a reminder that not all hardwoods are hard or softwoods are soft as well. They are known as hardwoods. Hardwoods are known as hardwoods, not because of their weight or hardness, but only because of the presence of a particular tubular structure called vessels in them. Look at them inside the circle on the image, that yellow color circle which you are seeing on the right-hand bottom corner of the image. Uh, majority of the trees growing around you are classified as hardwoods. They are usually darker in color and uh, heavier in weight, but there are exceptions uh, like, uh, for example, balsa, which is a very, it's classified as hardwood, but it's not very hard or even uh, 
Uh, it's a very light wood. And interestingly, that is one of the most imported species to our country now. So let's look at the softwood side. Um, wood from the conifer trees are known as softwoods. When you are going to the hills of Himalayas or nearby, uh, you know, up, up hills, you will you must have noticed the different types of trees in conical shape. They are called softwoods. They have very long and strong fibers. There, those fibers are known as trachytes in it, in place of vessel. So the only one character which makes wood hard or hardwood or softwood that is a presence or absence of vessels. So now I invite you to understand two more very important uh, technical terms, which is uh, they are helpful in wood utilization: hardwood and sapwood. Hardwood actually is the central core of the trunk, which is dark in color usually, but not necessarily always. And they are made up of non-living cells, means dead cells with the deposit of extractives and you know, natural chemicals. Actually, the, that kind of deposits or the presence of extractives give the timber the durability or the long-term performance. So that is the only part of, part of the wood which is usable. On the other side, the outer portion of the tree or the trunk when it is cut, that is called sapwood. And uh, sapwood is the living part of the uh, timber. Uh, because of that uh, you know, living activities happening there, a lot of food material is stored there. That is the reason why insects are attacking for food or the mold or fungi, uh, they are all, you know, try to eat this part of the wood. So the important uh, thing you need to understand here is the non-durable part sapwood, which should not be selected and used in your projects because they will attract the um, attack by the different bioorganisms. So we learned about hardwood and softwood as well as hardwood and sapwood. Now, Another important parameter is moisture content. Moisture content is nothing but the uh, quantity of wood inside, uh, sorry, quantity of water inside the timber. You know, when the, while the tree is growing, it absorbs a lot of water and it is retained there. So when it is cut, the moisture content at the initial stage will be much higher, so say around 100% or even more. So it has to be removed. The water content needs to be bring it, uh, brought down to around 12% on an average. So that particular process is called the season. It is a controlled drying of timber. So if we simply uh, you know, dry it outside, there will be a lot of uh, damages or defects formation there. So seasoning of timber is a must actually to attain or make good quality products. So now you understood already uh, the basics and their importance in wood utilization. Let's look into the versatility in wood properties. So let's start with the color. You know, you must have seen wood in different, different colors, you know, starting from light color timber or dark color timber or even the very black color timber. So I'm just showing you some of the major examples here. Western red cedar from Canada, which is dark in color. On the other end, uh, yellow cedar is very light in color. And in between there are wood, uh, other colors. So very interestingly, if you look at this picture on the screen, this is actually an inlay work. More than 15 different species, wood from different species have been used here. Those species are selected based on the color. So this is simply to show you the vividness of color choices from different species. It is only the matter of selecting the right timber. So next is the weight of the timber. Wood is normally considered as, you know, the, the weight of wood is much less com compared to many other products. So the range of uh, the density is ranging uh, between 200 to 600 usually. Majority of the commercial timbers come in between that range. However, there are exceptions such as balsa. I mentioned about balsa earlier, which is a low density and density timber. And black wood on, or the lignum vitae, which is very high. Uh, dense wood, which cannot be easily even worked with. Uh, so, uh, latest studies show that density of the wood is not the you know, major important factor. Uh, it is just one among the other factors. So, if you consider, uh, if you look at the table here on the screen, uh, the density of wood is 
very less compared to steel or concrete or the or, or, or on the other end you know however um, the the strength properties or the overall performance of wood is much much better in, in many cases so even if the uh, weight is less in many applications wood wood performs well uh, it has got high strength weight ratio that is one of the most important parameters i wanted to mention here and got uh, very good uh, mechanical properties especially shear resistance which is helpful in uh, achieving um, earthquake resistance in, in case of uh, building constructions so one more uh, important factor is durability which i mentioned in between uh, the presence of extractives some natural extractives that gives the uh, good day, uh, good durability there are so many hundreds of bridges across the globe performing well uh, which are maybe decades old or even more and we have examples here in india also uh, palaces for example uh, the one on the screen what you're seeing is uh, palace one of the oldest palaces in in our country which is more than 400 years old so if we select the right timber and design it properly and utilize it fabricate the st structure correctly then wood is one, one wood, wood can be a good choice for your all applications so now let me uh, talk to you about the versatile applications more versatile uh, uh, you know features thank you pranesh for covering all the uh, showcasing all the applications of canadian wood uh, so here I'm just briefly showing you some interior furniture here. It can be, wood is good for interior applications, excellent for, um, you know, many applications starting from furniture of different types. Then uh, in interiors, it can be painted or stained or just left with a clear finish to show the beauty of the wood inside. So it is the choice. It is a choice of the fabricator as well as the end user, what kind of finish it requires. However, all these are, uh, you know, if you look at, if you look closely uh, on these images, there uh, you see the beauty of the wood products there. So in outdoor, which is uh, always a challenging condition for a natural material to withstand, these all are examples of Canadian wood in outdoor applications. You can see pergola, gazebo, decking, etc. Uh, apart from the constructing houses and uh, you know multi-story buildings. So wood is equally good for interior and outdoor application as well as for some specialty applications. If you look closely, there are uh, some of these specialty products made with the candy board, very thin um, panels or failed panels, they are called. You see on the top left corner of the screen, uh, they are very highly profiled, maybe around three millimeter thick, that makes thin. Uh, profile panels and the dining table on the middle of the screen what you see dining table set that is made of uh, finger jointed and uh, laminated uh, into glued boards so these all are uh, you know possible with uh, canadian wood and these all are living examples of uh, different uses so wood is again you know good for wood is the raw material for many other manufactured product you know plywood or particle board or MDF or laminated linear lumber or so many are there. For all those products, raw material is wood only, natural timber only. So let me talk more about the sustainability of wood. Pranesh uh, <clears throat> has mentioned to you about the different operations, sustainable practices we follow in Canadian forest industry. However, you will be uh, wondering how wood can be a sustainable material when we are removing or cutting wood from the uh, forest. Let me talk to you in detail. Uh, well, many of the people uh, asking this question, how cutting wood can be sustainable? So, wood, wood from responsibly managed and certified forests are sustainable. It's not for, you no, know, wood from uh, or timber from illegally harvested forest or uh, non-sustainable forests, they are not considered as the as uh, sustainable material. So let me start with the um, carbon content. Okay, so wood can be considered as the gift 
nature's gift to humanity. And uh, it is a renewable and replenishable, which can be regenerated in every 20 years of time, you know, 20 years to 100 years. That is the replenishment time to get any tree to mature and, you know, be put back. However, the important thing is that when a tree grows, it absorbs on an average one cubic uh, one cubic meter absorbs on an average about one ton of carbon dioxide. What that means when you use timber, we are indirectly removing one ton of carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. And when you are using wood in place of concrete, which requires energy, I'm going to explain that in the coming up slides. Uh, just as a preamble, I'm saying, when you replace concrete, one cubic meter of concrete with, with one cubic meter of wood, you are actually helping the nature to remove two tons of carbon dioxide. Going forward, I will explain further. So, to make all these different manufactured products, like steel or concrete or aluminium, whatever it is, all manufactured products, they need energy. That is called intensive energy. So <clears throat> the energy required is highly different for making a brick. It is just four times the uh, wood uh, energy required. However, to make the make aluminum, for example, it requires huge amount of energy, electricity mainly, which is 126 times. Now you understand what I'm trying to say. So all these manufactured products, they consume a lot of intensive energy. However, wood needs only sunlight apart from the water it is absorbing from the soil. So look at the look at look further at the environmental impact in manufacturing of these materials. Uh, they consume high energy, uh, high amount of energy, which I thought. However, apart from energy, they negatively impact the natural resources such as water, sand, rock, and you know, which are very hard to replenish. It will take thousands or even millions of years to replenish. So, on the other hand, wood requires only sunlight and water. So, if you look at the screen, I have mentioned about the other, other issues are, uh, along with like the air pollution, greenhouse gas emission, water contamination, and all sort of uh, pollution requirement. One more interesting factor about uh, the uh, concrete is that recently concrete industry uh, studies have shown that uh, concrete industry is actually contributing about 37 uh, percentage of the total carbon dioxide emissions. How it is 37? That is because 27 percentage of the total carbon dioxide emission is coming out through the building operations. Approximately 10 percentage is coming from the manufacturing of these different building uh, products. And overall, 37 percent, which is a huge amount of uh, uh, load on the uh, atmosphere. Actually, we used to think that automobile industry or auto, using automobile and manufacturing industry, these two were the major contributors. However, it is not like that. Ma majorly, concrete based building construction and concrete manufacturing, they are the major, you know, carbon dioxide contributor. One more important thing is that. We use a lot of water in concrete industry. And also it requires the second most abundant natural material, that is sand. See, I'm not uh, against use of concrete. Wherever concrete is required, such as for constructing very large dams or buildings or for uh, bridges, we need to use concrete. However, wherever possible, like furniture, interiors, all sort of things, we can think about using timber. So one more important aspect here is here wood would become or what makes wood as a sustainable material is the biophilic benefits. That means wood has very good health related properties. You know, it, it provides the um, warmth and keeping the energy or the you know, climate control inside what that means. When the house inside is cool, it, it retains the coolness. When the uh, atmosphere outside is warm, it does not pass that warmness inside. So the energy control or the, or the atmospheric control, uh, wood is a you know good insulator. Uh, we are talking about that in the coming slides. 
But anyway, the health related properties of wood is very much now uh, appreciated. So, uh, apart from the sustainable features, uh, what makes the wood, what makes wood as the unique material? Now comes uh, wood by virtue of uh, being 50% carbon by dry weight is a material with high embodied carbon and is just considered as the self-fire extinguisher. That means I told initially about the quantity of carbon dioxide absorbed in a timber. Uh, approximately one ton is absorbed, uh, absorbed and locked inside. That means during a fire incident, the carbon dioxide stored inside the timber in, is coming out and helping ex extinguishing the fire. So uh, it, it's a kind of self uh, extinguisher. As you can see on the screen, the charred surface protects the wood inside and the unbent wood inside, you know, that retains a minimum of 85% of the original strength. That means the, 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 the structure overall will be strong and also it, it uh, gives the time, escape time for evacuation. And uh, once the wood surface is charred, further you know, appreciation of fire is limited. Fire will extinguish itself in a few minutes of time. So, and one more important thing. Uh, further, wood hair does not transmit heat like steel, which expands under high temperatures and leads to collapse of co uh, concrete buildings. So, wood being a very poor conductor uh, or insulator rather, the uh, amount of energy transmitted and uh, uh, the, the damage happening is very limited. Years of research and uh, building code development have proven that wooden buildings can meet or even exceed the most demanding earthquake design requirements. See, we are in India, we are not, uh, it's not a very earthquake prone country, uh, but there are certain areas especially the Himalayas where uh, uh, we have earthquake incidents. So wood's natural elasticity, strength and lighter weight all together give it an advantage during the earthquake. The house you see on the right side of the screen that withstood actually 7.4 magnitude earthquake in Christchurch. I was personally involved in that earthquake. That's why I'm showing the picture. However, the interesting factor here, if you look closely on the picture, you see the structure is uh, damaged heavily. However, the overall damage or the, the interesting thing was there was no casualty at all. There were four people inside, nobody died. And the structure still is standing there, especially the wooden structure. So uh, to show the ductility or the wind resistance of the timber, uh, I just shown a couple of photos here and uh, citing the example of uh, timber houses. Uh, so wooden buildings have inherent ductility, which allows them to dissipate energy in a case in the case of a heavy uh, wind incident, such as cyclone or hurricanes, which uh, these are very common in the uh, in eastern part of our uh, you know, eastern shores, uh, Andhra Pradesh, Tiringan and all. Here we have, we get a lot of uh, cyclones and hurricanes here. The fact that wooden buildings have numerous nail connections means that they have more load paths, so there is less chance of structural collapse. Uh, now comes the uh, acoustic excellence of wood. Inherent properties of wood enhance wood buildings' acoustics and make it a good choice for residents, concert halls, basically, you know, auditoriums, and many other buildings for a rewarding acoustic experience. It's also considered ideal material for musical instruments. India is exporting a lot of uh, musical instruments or at least the parts of musical instruments to any major brands. So that is because of the inherent character of wood, which amplifies or absorbs sound waves, but does not allow them to pass through. Hence, when designed well, it is also considered excellent for audio privacy across rooms. See, in wooden houses, many a times people uh, complain, oh, this is a... Uh, uh, sound, we, we hear the sound of one room. Within one room, we hear the sound from our, outside. But that is because of the poor design and workmanship of the overall structure. So, 
I was trying to figure out and picturize the qualities, positive attributes of timber. However, there are some limitations also uh, associated with use of timber. One is biodegradable. Wood is biodegradable. However, uh, we can um, control that by using uh, uh, the proper selection of the right timber as well as the preservative treatment. Then response towards the environmental changes that is uh, overcome by the use of stable and seasoned timber. Uh, illegal or non-certified timber, the use of them. Uh, we need to create awareness and uh, implement proper suitable policies uh, to you know, control that. Lack of expertise and infrastructure. In that case, we need to continue our awareness creation programs through different training uh, uh, and uh, uh, training activities. So these are some of the uh, limitations. However, there are solutions as well. So what I'm one of the TK, uh, key takeaways for the day is that wood is the most traded natural material in the world at the moment, natural resource. Approximately 30% of the global trade of timber is illegal or from illegal sources. So that there comes the role of certified timber, use of more sustainable and certified timber such as Canadian species. And species diversity is depleting and uh, so is the volume of the timber. So we have to be a little conservative about the use of uh, our precious products. Use of um, certified timber can contribute to uh, the sustainable future. We now understand that our, our country has signed to the uh, COP26 uh, commitments, which uh, Pranesh Ji was mentioning in detail earlier. So please uh, bear that in mind. We have to achieve that by 2070. So we have to figure out ways and means to achieve those uh, targets. And uh, what is the material for future, which is very sure about that. So thank you for your attention. Over to Ritesh. Uh, thank you, Jimmy, for a knowledgeful presentation. Uh, see, we are... Uh... We are running short of the time, but I have compiled some of the questions, two questions for Pranesh and two for you probably. So Pranesh, first question for you. So the first question is that how Canada can justify the deforestation by cutting the forest in such a huge volume considering the present global and environmental challenges? Ritesh, just give us a second, please. He's just uh, switch on his video. Uh, May I deliver to you? you? Yes, it is. Okay, so Jimmy, if you want, you can answer this one. Since Pranesh is not available, you can answer this one. Thank you. It's a good, valid question. And uh, you know, many people ask that question these mm -hmm. days. See, uh, first sorry. of all... Sorry, sorry, sorry. sorry. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm back here. Uh, I had taken a bio break and uh, I'm here. Sorry, I believe there's a question for me. Yeah, so the question is, how Canada can justify the deforestation by cutting the forest in such a huge volume, considering the present global and environmental challenges? Okay, I mean, uh, I, I guess uh, you guys have seen the presentation I made. Uh, there are a few things you should have noticed. Mm -hmm. and, and I must highlight here that Canada has over 9%, almost 10% of the world's total forest cover. We are a forest nation and, and we pride ourselves that uh, uh, we have retained the forest cover same today after centuries uh, of uh, growth in economy and population, what the forest cover was when the settlers arrived in Canada. That means the forest cover in Canada at the time of when only the natives were living there who are known as the First Nations people in Canada, the forest cover today is the same. It has not depleted. Okay. Second thing, what we do is to ensure that we do not have deforestation taking place is that we put certain regulations and certain uh, restrictions on ourselves. For instance, uh, we routinely monitor as to how much uh, harvesting is taking place and if we find that there is a need to curtail harvesting then the action is taken to curtail the harvesting 
For instance, to give you a recent example, uh, some three, four years back, we were harvesting about 2% of our forest cover annually. Okay, that is also commercially harvestable forest. We were just harvesting 2% of it annually. Today, we have revised the target down to 0.35%. Now, why we have reduced it to 0.35% is because we would like to have less trees harvested for a certain period in time so that we have the growth of the required percentage back again. So this is the second action. The third action is that whichever forest is harvested, the Canadian authorities have got regulations and rules in place that the company which is granted the license to harvest forest has to first set up a, a nursery. And before harvesting the forest, they have to collect the seeds from that forest and bring it to the nursery for germination. And those saplings, while growing the saplings in the nursery that for particularly identified forest is harvested. And then we we just don't do any plantation. We do reforestation and reforestation means taking back the saplings from the seeds collected from that area which has been harvested in back into that same forest and, and planting it back there. This is done to prevent any change in the ecosystem. That means the the environment has to remain undisturbed and same over the period of time. Even when the new trees are growing up, they do not bring about any change in the environment. That means animals and the birds and other, other wild species, they feel that the environment is the same as it was earlier, except that yes, it has been harvested and it has started growing on its own and complete forest is never de de uh, removed. Only patches of forest are removed. So I hope this answers your question. Yeah, to uh, extent, yes. So, and thank you for your elaborate answer. Uh, Jimmy, I have one question for you. And this question is, uh, you know, uh, these Canadian forests, they are deciduous in nature and they're deciduous in origin, in fact. So how this wood will perform in Indian climate? Okay, so the question is, uh, the term deciduous means, mm. uh, I think somehow the, the term is used, not correctly used here. Deciduous means the trees which can shed the leaves during the winter time and uh, it will regenerate after the winter. It's a mechanism of the trees. So anyway, uh, the questioner must have thought of uh, conifer. In, in, yeah, conifer, in yeah. So, Whatever it is, whatever mm. I understand the question this way, conifers or softwoods from a different climatic zone coming to this uh, this tropical country. This is the scenario. So it is not new to those species because uh, these are more than hundred year old trees or wood we we harvest. Okay, so it has already gone through different uh, different um, years of different types of climatic changes, first thing. Secondly, these are very mature trees and the wood itself is very stable once it is mature. And it is seasoned also because when the wood is seasoned properly, bringing the moisture down below or around 20 percentage, the wood will not you know, move according to the new situation. It will move only within the control condition. So, Wherever it goes, Canada is exporting wood to more than 40 countries. So whichever the climatic zone it is arriving and reaching, only a uh, simple acclimatization is required. That is hap happening when the wood arrives and the wood adjusts itself to the equilibrium moisture content. So respective of the final destination, uh, you know, the wood is mature, stable, seasoned and also uh, acclimatize once it is arriving in the, city, uh, the new place. So, um, yeah, these are the all positive attributes with the Canadian world. Very good. Uh, so, Pranesh, there is one question for you. And the audience wants to know, uh, are your exterior grade species are chemically treated 
and how canadian wood is placed again commonly available species in india in terms of the price what was the first sentence you said are exterior grade species from canada chemically treated or they are naturally durable something like that so uh, the two cedar species yellow cedar and the western red cedar from the coastal okay. forests of canada they are naturally resistant to not only termites and insects but also to decay molds etc uh the testimony to their durability is that the native uh natives of north america we, as i said uh, known as now the first first nations people they have been using their canoes made out of these uh, cedar species for a very very long time in the past and these canoes have been plowing both in uh, salt water as well as the fresh water lakes okay yeah. you can understand that canoes made from these woods and these canoes don't ever come out of the water they stay in the wood they yeah, sorry they stay in the water so so you can understand the durability of these woods other thing is uh these species do not uh uh disintegrate with the onslaught uh, which they receive on daily basis from the from the climatic conditions uh again i would say that is because of their natural ability to withstand the uh what we call natural elements they can withstand cold heat rain sleet snow very well so so i mean these are again uh god's gift to canada i would say these two uh, cedar species uh, they are not chemically treated at all they are naturally resistant now we must remember here that we i am using the word naturally resistant right i am not using termite proof or or decay proof because there is nothing in this world which is natural which does not decay there is there has to come some time some somewhere or some some place where anything which is uh, natural will have to bow out of this world okay and that will happen but that happens over a long long time for our wood species okay um, if not centuries sometimes but mostly i mean you can think that anywhere between 70 80 years to 100 years is a, is, a, is a good enough time for any house made of wood to be, to be able to withstand mm -hmm. um, these these two species uh, are extensively used for even products like gazebos pergolas saunas uh, decking which are constantly open to you know um, natural climate conditions like rain water sleet etc etc so i i would uh, answer the first question uh, this way here and end that part here and uh, the second part of the question i believe uh, ritesh you said was how do you compare that with the local species uh, the common the popular species in india in terms of the price and performance okay so uh, the popular species in india i don't know i mean the popular species in india vary from region to region actually uh, what's pop popular up north is not uh, considered very popular down south because we have a vast nation and in this nation of ours we have the advantage of having different uh, Uh, species which are very popular in different areas for instance rosewood and and uh, um, what we call as uh, yeah, mahogany is is more popular down south whereas we have uh, um, uh, different species up north more popular and if you go further up uh, to to the mountainous region of uh, northern india then you have species like deodhar and and uh, kale and and cheed which are basically other names for the many softwood species you would have heard the english names for uh, these are very popular there so coming to the comparison with the canadian wood species i would say that the, the indian uh, wood species are excellent uh, uh, very good species we have in india and we are very proud to have those species here uh, but unfortunately our uh, forests are protected because we have had uh, unprecedented deforestation taken place in the past uh, century or so we had lost a majority of our forest cover uh, with the government stepping in in the late 80s and early 90s 
to protect our forests by passing certain legislations. Today, we have the advantage that in 2017, 18, for the first time, our forests started for the uh, start uh, started not to degrow anymore. Okay, uh, our de deforestation was stemmed. Okay, but for our forest to come back in full bloom, it will take not just decades, it might take a couple of centuries for our forest to come back in full bloom. Having said that, uh, there are certain species which are still uh, available, locally harvested from the uh, forest, uh, so from, from the areas outside of forest, uh, that wood is available. And uh, those are available through the government auctions. That is a very limited wood. So India is basically what we call, uh, classify as a country which is uh, deficient in wood fiber. Okay, so we are a wood fiber uh, wood fiber deficient nation, and we have to perforce depend on imported wood species to meet our needs and requirement. So where to get the wood from? The best way to get the wood from is from sustainably managed forests, legally harvested wood, which is certified. So I would say there is no direct comparison per se to do as to why not use this and why we don't use this. I am saying that the, there is a need for us to import wood and to import wood, we should make sure that we import it from sustainably managed forests, wood that is certified and which is legally harvested. Great. Very well answered, in fact. Uh, Jimmy, the, another question and the last one for you. Uh, how would you compare the life of a wooden house with the RCC, considering it is a biodegradable material and susceptible to infestation and fire? Good question again. Um, see, whether the wood or concrete, the important thing is design, design and well building. A well built house, whether that is in concrete or or wood can sustain many long years. However, there are uh, some issues with uh, both the materials. If it is continuously exposed to water, both the materials will disintegrate over a period of time. So the important thing here is the proper design. If it is prop if a wood house is properly designed and it is fabricated well, considering all the different natural enemies in our mind, not enemies, elements actually, but it's enemy to the wood and structure. So if you consider proper design and proper uh, uh, fabrication and also fit and finishing and workmanship, all these combined together make us a building system. Wood alone cannot sustain or concrete alone cannot sustain. Wood will perform much better than um, concrete based building which we all know so uh, there is not actually comparison we have hundreds of buildings or even thousands of uh, wood based buildings across the globe we have so many such examples right in India also we have such examples I think there is no direct comparison okay. possible now okay good so balanced answer uh, so you know, there are some questions which I, I could not take because of time constant, but uh, all questions would be answered individually to the respective participants through mail. You all are requested to share your feedback on link you receive after this webinar. Before I announce the end of the session, I would like to thank Professor Kamini Singh, uh, Principal SVCA, Architect Samar Ramchandra, Principal Architect Samar Ramchandra Associates, and Pratibha for ex their extended support in making this webinar a possibility. Our eminent speakers deserve a great appreciation for putting their efforts, time, and energy into preparing and delivering such a fantastic talk. A significant credit goes to Arif Musa, our manager, marketing. Last but the most important, I convey my gratitude to all the participants for taking their time and being an active listener. Dear participants, I would like to announce the end of this webinar with a small message. Sustainability is not a fashion anymore. It is the way of life. And wood is one of the most versatile sustainable materials available to the mankind on earth. We look forward to more interaction with you all in future. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ritesh. Thank you, Jimmy. And thank you, audience, for being uh, patient and sticking with us for over an hour.
we have yeah. overshot the allotted time yes, to us. 15 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Thank yeah. you for bearing with us. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Good day. Bye-bye.